Hey everybody, this is Jeff again from the Overwatch team. Really exciting update for today because we're gonna talk about competitive play. This is one of the top requested features from the community. A lot of people were wondering, are we gonna have something in by launch? Well, it's very exciting for us to put the competitive play into the beta so we can start seeing it, feeling it, and getting your feedback. So we wanna give you kind of a, a broad overview of what it's gonna be like, and then set, you up, set your expectations in the right direction because we're gonna do some development on it now and test it in beta, but we have further plans for it in the future to make it even cooler. So here's what you're gonna see in the beta immediately. Uh, first off, there'll be now under the play section, there'll be a competitive play option next to the quick play option. Um, this option unlocks for you when you're level 25. A lot of people are wondering, you know, how do we come up with level 25 and why is it there? Uh, the thought was that level 25 is relatively easy and fast for players to achieve, uh, but it's enough of a barrier to keep brand new players sort of out and away from the system. We understand that players who are playing competitive play are very serious about the experience and don't want to be matched with players who, who don't know the heroes or don't necessarily know the maps yet. So we felt like 25 was a pretty good compromise. Uh, the other big question that I'm sure a lot of you have is, you know, is it single queue only? Is it group queue only? Because we've talked about a lot uh, in the past. And the cool thing is we've come up with a system that's going to allow it to be any group size that you want, one through six. So if you want to queue by yourself, we will match you uh, with other players of similar skill. And if you want to group uh, as two or three or four or five or even six, uh, we'll accommodate that. And we'll do our best to put you against groups of equal sizes. And we think we have a pretty good system in place to ensure that that uh, works and feels really good for everyone. So unlike quick play, uh, competitive play is what we call a single match queue. So quick play will put you into a match and the games will just kind of keep rolling until something happens that makes the players have to disperse and, and no longer play their matches. But it will be different for competitive play. So what will happen is you will queue up either by yourself or in, in a group. You will get put into a match and if it's an attack defend map, um, what we call Assault, or one of our payload maps, which we call Escort, you will play once as the attacker and once as a defender. Um, and then afterwards, it will uh, sort of resolve the match and then it will be done. So what will happen is, it, let's take a, a Escort map as an example. If you get placed on an Escort map and your team wins as the attacker and wins as a defender, you're considered the winner. And um, I'll, I'll get more into what being the winner means in, in a little bit. If the other team wins on attack and wins on defense, you, you've lost. So that seems all pretty obvious. So what happens if you win on attack but then lose on defense? Probably a lot of you guys are wondering, you know, how does that resolve itself? Well, in that case, the match will go to a sudden death overtime. Sudden death takes place on one of our control maps on a randomly selected point but only on a single point. So you might end up on point two of Ilios, for example, where it will resolve a single point of sudden death over time to determine the winner. Um, we feel like this is a really exciting way to resolve the matches. A lot of people have asked us, you know, why not uh, stopwatch? Stopwatch is something we're very familiar with. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with stopwatch, what it refers to is one team winning or taking a certain uh, objective and then another team having to do the same within uh, that time or better. And the reason we've sort of steered away from stopwatches being our competitive format is we really like seeing matches played through until the end. We feel like there's a lot of fun, cool competitive gameplay that happens in moments like for example on Watchpoint Gibraltar watching a team defend the final payload approach where the rocket ship is. It can be very fun and exciting. And it's sort of anticlimactic watching a lot of stopwatch matches where a match will resolve, you know, sort of in the middle of the map in a place that doesn't always make a lot of sense. Um, and it, it feels like it kind of skews the mechanics as well a, a little bit to us. The other thing is uh, for viewers, it can also be very confusing what's going on. Um, and we sort of want to see matches played to completion. So that's why we've chosen this format. 
Uh, the other question you probably have at this point is, well, what happens to the control maps? So control maps, we're trying an experiment. If it doesn't feel good or if it feels off in some way, you know, we have some other ideas. But for control maps, we're going to try a three out of five system rather than a two out of three system. So that means you will play some of the same points more than once on a control map. And the reason for this, the reason for three out of five, is to try to match the time commitment that a mirror match of, let's say, escort or assault would take. So those are some changes to how the matches will work in competitive play. Now, more important to a lot of you guys is, well, what about progression and how does progression work? So there's a really cool system in place um, it's similar to a lot of other competitive systems that are out there. We spent a lot of time examining the competitive systems that you guys referred to us, um, as well as all the competitive systems from previous Blizzard games. And what we've come up with is a system where there are five tiers. And uh, tier is kind of an arbitrary word, so let me explain it a little bit better to you. The, the five tiers are called Challenger, Advanced, Expert, Master, and Heroic. Um, within each of the tiers, with the exception of Heroic, which I'll get a little bit more into in a second, within each of the tiers there are five divisions. Um, so it goes from Division 1 to Division 5, Division 5 being the most prestigious. So everybody will start out, if, if you've never played Overwatch competitive play before, you will start out as a Division 1 challenger. Um, and your goal there is to sort of work yourself uh, all the way to the next tier, which in this case would be advanced. And the way you do that is through advancing through the divisions, you know, division one to two to three, etc. The cool part about the challenger tier is you can't lose any points. So when you win matches, like I said previously, you're, you're earning or losing points, except if you're a challenger, you don't lose points. So you can only positively progress out of challenger. Now things get more difficult as you get into the other tiers. So in advance, um, you can actually fall back into Challenger, or if you're an expert Division One and you lose enough, you can fall back into Advance, for example. Um, so it does become more competitive and more difficult to work your way up the ladder as you get further along in the system. Now Heroic is different. Heroic does not contain five divisions like the other tiers do. Heroic is more similar to, uh, to use an example that some of you will, will know, Hearthstone Legendary. Once you get to Heroic, our plan is to show you your actual rank against all of the other Heroic players. So really the best players in the world will be Heroic players and you'll see an actual rank number for them and where they stand in the world. Now in the first iteration of competitive play that you guys are seeing or getting to experience right now in Overwatch, Heroic is just gonna be a tier unto itself and we're not gonna show the ranks just yet. We feel like there's a lot of tuning and balancing that we need to do before we really start that rank system. So we sort of wanna get something out there that you can wrap your head around. We wanna make sure that the match format is feeling good, um, that the queue times are working correctly, that the match times are working correctly. As we get deeper into the system, you know, either approaching launch or post-launch, we're gonna make Heroic available in terms of its ranks. You can get to Heroic now, you just won't be able to see your ranks. Um, kind of segueing, um, at first, because we're in beta, we're not gonna run actual seasons yet. We're gonna call it preseason for some time. And preseason might even expand past the beta period. We might even roll a couple of months of the live game in what we call preseason to make sure that the system is right. And preseason basically will function just like the actual game will. We're just making sure that things feel right and we're doing tuning and iteration. When the game goes live, the plan is to do one month season starting on the first of every month. So it'll be very understandable, you know, how to climb the ladder and when to do it. You're gonna always be looking forward to that first of the month because you'll always have a chance to sort of uh, level up and, and re-go through the competitive system. In beta, we're gonna do some different things. The, the pre-seasons, uh, we need to do testing. So we're gonna do them faster than a month. We might have one that ro runs longer than a month. We're gonna be experimenting um, with timeframes in the beta that are not 
accurate to what our actual plans are. So you should sort of prepare yourself for that. Um, and the final thing I wanted to touch on was rewards because we know, you know, players are looking for um, different sort of motivations to do things like competitive play. Um, it's very important for me to get this out there early to you guys. Competitive play is not supposed to be about rewards. It's, the competitive play in and of itself should be rewarding. The types of players that are drawn to these systems are more there for the really healthy competition against one another and seeing their standing against other players. So when it comes to rewards, we want to make sure that they are light and cosmetic only. And in the early preseasons in the beta, we don't plan to give out any rewards. Um, we just want people testing the system uh, for, the for the sake of testing the system and not necessarily drawing players who, who really don't necessarily want to be in a competitive system there through rewards. But, you know, really critical for everybody to understand, we wouldn't be giving any sort of power gain or any rewards long term once we do add the rewards to the competitive system. They'll be light, they'll be cosmetic, um, but they'll be cool. Um, so we'll be working on that. You probably have a lot more questions. I know that there's more to the system and a lot more details that I didn't get into right now. Um, what we're going to do, there was a really great designer named Scott who worked on this system. He and I will both be answering as many questions as we can on the forums. We'll be talking to you guys. We'll be listening to your feedback. And then we'll really be watching how players approach competitive play in the beta to define what competitive play means when the, go the game goes live. Um, we really appreciate how invested you guys were. We appreciate that you pushed us to get the system in by launch, and we're excited to deliver it for you guys. You, you stated how important it was to you, and it was important to us to get it in for that reason. Uh, we want to hear what you say, so, so please uh, leave feedback. Uh, we're paying attention to the community, and we really look forward to seeing what you guys do with the system. Thanks, everyone.